Daily Devotionals with Open Hearts and Open Minds. First United Methodist Church in Pueblo, Colorado presents Hope and Coffee with Pastor Hugo Venegas. Hi, welcome back to Hope and Coffee. This week we're reviewing the 14 faces of hope based on Genesis chapter 6 through 11. And uh, we have talked about the face of walking with God, number one. Number two, the face of righteousness, how to live right with God. And today we're going to talk about the faith of obedience. And if you go to chapter 6 of Genesis, you see that God gives Noah instructions as to how to build an ark, how to to go about getting animals and all these things. And then in, in chapter 6, verse 22, it says, Noah did everything just as God had commanded him. So if we want to have hope, if we want to have uh, that light of hope in our lives in this time, these difficult times, we have to be obedient to whatever God wants us to do. And I want you to know that obedience for Noah was was an amazing thing because he lived in the desert and God told him to build an ark in the middle of the desert and we know that it took him forever to build this ark years of 50 to 70 years according to scholars and uh, he 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 did exactly what God told him to he didn't budge an inch he didn't make suggestions to God and uh, God recognizes him and said Noah did exactly as the Lord had instructed to him. So I want you to learn a few things about obedience. Let's review a few things. Number one, obedience is a marathon. Okay? It was not just one year of obedience. It was a lifetime of obedience in building that ark. 50 to 70 years. They're calculating. That's how it took to build the ark. So when we think of obedience... Is, it's, it's, it's a lifetime of walking with God. It's a lifetime of, of following what God asks us to do. And there are different things that ask, God asks us to do to, during you know, different phases of our lives. Sometimes God may say, I want you to sit. And if God says sit, just sit. If God says go, you got to go. If God says jump, you got to jump. If God says give, you have to give. If God says, I need you to, to do this for me, and it may be crazy, you just got to do it because it's, it's a marathon. Also, obedience is countercultural. And we see this in the life of Noah, that the people were partying, they were drinking, they were carrying on, and uh, just being happy, being happy in the culture, no regard for God, no regard for what God was up to. And uh, Noah was doing the opposite of what the culture was doing. The culture, they were just investing in their own narcissistic and selfish desires. But Noah was invested in what God wanted to do, in what God had called him to do. And sometimes when we obey God, it's countercultural. It's hard for people to assimilate obedience. Let me give you a little story. And I've shared this with some of you. About two months ago, I was praying on a Saturday, and as I was praying, there was an image of a mom and her two sons that came to mind. And I was like, out of nowhere, why why would this lady and her sons come to mind? And this lady works at a resort in, in La Fortuna, where every year I go and I have debriefing on our missionary projects, and we stay at this resort, me and my friend Pastor Bobby. And uh, we know this lady that popped up in my mind, because she works at the at the resort so so I am like I don't have her phone number and I knew that God wanted me to engage her so I called a friend of mine who has friends in this area where this woman lives and I said I need uh, if you can call one of your friends and say does she know uh, the woman who works at the front desk at this resort da 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 and I gave the instructions within less than an hour I got a phone number of this person and I called this lady up and I said, hey, how are you doing? And she's like, oh, good to hear from you. Uh, Things are crazy here. Everything is shut down. The resort is shut down. They have furloughed everyone. And uh, how are you doing? I've heard things are crazy in the U.S. I'm like, yeah, they're crazy, but I'm locked up. I'm cooped up. I'm not going around running around like like a crazy chicken with its head cut off. 
And then I said, have you been praying to God for something? She goes, no, I haven't been praying. And I'm like, are your sons praying? And she goes, she goes, eh, I don't know. And she acted all sheepishly. I said, God gave me a vision. I was praying and your mind and your sons came to mind. So there is something that is going on and that's what I'm calling. And she goes, no, nothing is going on. And I, and, and I just felt that I had to be obedient to the Lord. And I said, your sons are praying for something. If you're not praying, your sons are praying for something. And then I said to her, do you have food? And she went silent and she said, eh, no, I don't have any food to feed my kids. I am out of a job. I don't have a paycheck. And I said, your sons have been praying. You may not be praying, but your sons are praying. And that's why God put it on my heart. And I'm calling you because Pastor Bobby and myself, we're going to help you get food so that you can feed your boys and and i was obedient and and it was weird it came out of nowhere and the same thing like noah you see that's why that's why obedience is countercultural because it comes out of nowhere build an ark in the middle of a desert and sometimes god comes out of left field left field stuff and i just want us to be open to being obedient to god even if it's countercultural even if the culture it doesn't agree with what we're doing. And we live in a culture in which they want us to fight with each other. They want us to, to be enemies with each other. They want us to be divided. But the Bible doesn't teach us us. It tells us we are one. And it may be countercultural to say we are one family. We are one people. We are one nation. That may be countercultural. But that's what God wants us. So sometimes our obedience is not the flow of the culture. We have to go against it if God is calling us. And the last thing that I want us to say is that obedience gets us through difficult times. That there is no safer place for us to be than when we're obeying God. When we are staying in pocket with what God wants us to, to do. And uh, my I have a friend up in Denver. He's a business guy. And uh, he is in, the, in, 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 in a kind of a business in which all the business in Denver that they do delivery have folded, all of the companies up there. And his is the only company who has not folded. And the reason for it is because he was praying and the Lord said to him, you be obedient to me and you do exactly as I tell you, and I will prosper and I will bless your company in this pandemic. And God gave him certain things to do, and he has been obedient to everything and uh, he just got a big, big, big contract with an international company to do delivery in Colorado. And he's the only company that is available and has not folded. Why? Because God told him, this is how I want you to run your business. And you're going to do exactly as I tell you. And he has followed everything that God has given to him. And that's why his company is prospering in the middle of a pandemic. So whatever God has called you to do, if he has called you to pray, if he has called you to call people up and check in and see how they're doing. And for some of you, some of us, God has called us to share our money to help feed other people. And if that's what he's calling you to do, just be obedient. There is no safer place. There is no nicer place to be than being obedient. And even through difficult times, God will bless us. God will be with us. And we just need to keep being obedient to him. As the old song used to say, trust and obey. There is no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. This is Hugo Venegas from Pueblo, Colorado. God bless you. Thank you for joining us for our daily devotional, Hope and Coffee, with Pastor Hugo Venegas. If you enjoyed today's devotion, like or subscribe below. We also welcome you to join our family at First United Methodist Church in Pueblo, Colorado. You can visit our website at firstumcpueblo.org, and we hope you continue to have a blessed day. We'll see you tomorrow.